firefighters were hopeful that the Harris Fire would not hop the 94 towards the east, and it has done just that, as you can see here, burning up into the hills. Um, dozens of homes up here in the area. Yeah, I got four manpower out here. What do you, what do you need? Many people think of wildfire as a tidal wave of flames that comes through and destroys everything in its path. But direct contact with the fire is only one of the many ways that homes ignite. By understanding the multiple ways that fire can threaten a home, we can begin to understand the multiple ways we must prepare homes and communities to make them fire safe. A house can ignite by one of three ways. The first two ways are direct flame con contact, or radiant heat from a fire that's close to the house. The third way that a house can be ignited is through flying embers. Most homes and wildland fires are ignited through embers. They can be flurries of small embers or they can be large brands the size of a football and these embers can travel up to a mile ahead of the fire. The embers can then get into the house through vents. They can ignite debris filled gutters. Uh, they can get under the roof tiles between the roof tile and the roof sheeting or they can ignite flammable materials adjacent to the house. One home catches on fire, we end up with multiple homes catching on fire because the brand and the radiant heat coming off from the home that caught on fire is much hotter and will ignite homes that are close by. Because wildfires threaten structures in so many ways, protecting homes and communities requires that all threats be addressed. In saving the homes, we look at homes as a systems approach. Uh, one weak link in the system can cause the home to fail and what I mean by that is that we have to look at the landscaping, we have to look at the construction features, we have to look at where the home's placed. Those are all components and if one of those is overlooked or somebody comes in and plants a tree too close, the potential of losing that house is much greater. What saved this house is they had proper defensible space or landscaping as well as, as you notice, the structure is set back from the top of slope at a certain distance that's required. And then it's also have an ignition resistant construction. If any one of those components weren't into the, the whole picture, then there's a good chance that house would have been lost. When considering how to prepare your property for wildfire, you can think of your home and community in terms of zones. The University of California Cooperative Extension and the County of San Diego have website information and brochures available upon request for the following zones. The interior zone ensures sources of ignition inside the home are reduced and fire safety equipment is ready in case of emergency. The structure zone focuses on the building materials and designs that affect the structure's ignitability and resistance to ember penetration. The defensible space zone is the area immediately around the home that includes landscaping, outdoor furniture, and auxiliary structures. Maintained properly, it can reduce the chance that the structure will be exposed to direct flames and indirect radiant heat. The access zone includes proper road widths, street and house identification, and adequate evacuation routes. Not only does this ensure safe evacuation, but access for emergency vehicles. For additional information, visit wildfirezone.org where you can find further details about how to prepare your pets and livestock, vegetation management and maintenance on both private and public land, evacuation and other wildfire topics. Saving the house is not just one thing, it's a system. It's the building design, the building construction, the fuel modification, the setback from the slopes. It's it's like a car that has a number of safety features built into it. Find out how. Go to wildfirezone.org. Give your life and home a fighting chance. Know your zones.